God, master of the gods, though God of the gods of life, who makes the sun helpful to proclaim his glory. Inborn, the blueprint of life, with directional time, the breath of creation stretched into space like a flash. And so was born receptors with gravitational flow, generating the gravitational wave. The runaway cosmos has been curved by the force of life. Interlocking the gravitational waves at first via hyperdimensional interference, teeming the wild flow. Four clockwise gravity waves merging into one then four counterclockwise gravity waves, merging into then the two systems interlocking 45 degrees apart, neutralizing the spin, harnessing the force of life that filled the cosmos. The cosmos is alive, filled with the breath of that breaks in trino. Then came the birth of the graviton from the neutrino when six gravitational waves plunging through the seventh as the Sumerian tapas. The six centrifugal force of the spinning waves pulled her by the seventh one, forming an imploding force giving birth to nuclear wells. To that was necessary, curbing the universe from runaway. Molding the gravitational wave matter via hyperdimensional interference also happened this way. The way the matter is born, building mass that accumulates gravity. The greater the mass, the greater the gravity. Galactical systems formed from life force in superlattice virgin stars still in sacred geometry but once the force of gravity triggers the fusion process stars become suns the furnace of matter sacred cosmic dark matter neutrinos liquid neutrinos burn to produce photons particles electrons protons neutrons and elements with chaotic interference. Matter is marching towards its death as anti-gravitational forces. Six burned out sun interlocks plunging through the center, the seventh one forming a black hole. Recycling the supernova via black holes, so does matter die as it was born. The core of the sun holds liquid neutrino, the source of light and hydrogen, the source of sacred water on the sun, and life that originates on the sun. As the Sumerian tried so hard to tell it to us, the total entire gravity of the cosmos is equal with the total entire gravity of the galactical system, or rather the gravity of the galactical system that is molding the universe together. Mass equivalent of the universe, MEU times entire gravity is equals mass equivalent of the galaxies times the gravity. In the galactical system, energy compressed in nuclear wells to form mass and huge bodies, suns and stars, and turning out gravitational forces, while in the cosmos is the opposite. The matter, the mass pulled apart, stretched out like a football field, and it's producing anti-gravity instead, and the two is in balance to help the universe together.
But you see here, this is the shrine of God with the seeds of life and the origin of life that has been restored from a Sumerian city and reproduced alive. The Egyptian tried to replicate the shrine with concrete, without any meanings, and no information was forthcoming from that piece of work. Now, we can begin with Sumeria. The Sumerians visited us in the past from our twin solar system, our twin sun, that is formed from sacred matter, dark matter. In order to form sacred matter, the matter has to be in super lattice like a marching band in order. Dark matter is still a star with no nuclear fusion. Therefore, all life forms, their genetic material is in superlattice, sacred geometry, tetrahedral structure, forming more distrained DNA and black proteins with electrons paired in the amino acids and such an electrons when in pair controlling the spin forming the super lattice and become superconductive but not only free electron will flow but also the force of life therefore superconductive having access to free energy they build and destroy atlantis as we are part of the experiment. Babylonians call them the gods of God. They knew them only through the survivor of Atlantis, who brought some of the fragments, some prehistoric artifacts and seals that are documenting the colossal knowledge and the physics of tomorrow, the physics of the cosmos, the origin of life, the anti-gravitational machines, since they came from an anti-gravitational solar system. All the equipment and machinery based on anti-gravitational forces. Anti-gravitational forces hinder your energy, like gravitational, like our solar system, is taking it away from you. Only prehistorical seals are true Sumerians, and only they are holding the true information. The secret of the code of their language has never broken. This is the first time it's being broken. The Babylonians, Assyrians, and Egyptians are poor copies with little or no carryover of information. In our documentary, we shall begin with the Sumerian map and the force of life. And you will be stunned when you will see the rest of this documentary. Hologram of the breath of creation formed at the interference point as six waves forming a hyperdimensional hologram, plunging through the cement to form the nuclear well. Here you see the centrifugal forces pulling towards the center, and the center one creating an implosion, forming the nuclear well. This, of course, will give birth to gravita. Six plus one. The Sumerian set is equals 50. Well, if you add the crest of the waves, you have to square the 7, which is 49. But if 6 is plunging through the 7, 
then 6 squared is 36 plus 1 squared is 37 plus 2 times 6 plus 1 is 51. Then 49 plus 1 is equals this 1. So the Sumerians were correct after all when they said 50 is coming from the calculations I just cited for you. This is the way the graviton was formed, but now six graviton plunging through the seven then in to mold energy into matter, building mass and gravity. But the Sumerians told us some other things as well. So we know now that matter is formed from energy via hyperdimensional holograms forming the nuclear well. But if we take four gravitational wave spinning one direction and concentrating by centrifugal forces through the center. The one that spinning in opposite direction that will form the opposite force. So we're talking here matter and anti-matter. In a sense or equivalent of spin and anti-spin. When this happens, that is giving birth to the force. And this exactly what the Sumerians is demonstrating on this gold seal magnified. You can see the four waveform. Hari concentrate through the center and breathing to one, forming the force of life. But remember now, we have two kinds, one positive and one negative. And if you lay them on top of each other, they will interlock 45 degree, neutralizing the spin. The way the rest of it, what you see, is the seed of life. Now, this is the way how these waves look like when you restore them. And this is the way, the way the opposite spins interlock. Here is the horn. It's so the result of the geometry. You will hear a lot more about this. Also, of course, the black protein production. And here we come now of the Sumerian seal depicting the force of life. Four neutrino braided together. 32 waveform altogether, 16 by 16. They all fit into each other and they're flowing in one direction. And if any one of these is flipped around, you're setting up a roadblock. The flow of life energy is hindered. In the center, you can see the various life forms indicating that all these lives dependent on this physics and that's where they're originating from. Here is when this information from this cell has been reconstructed and cleaned up, restored, so you can follow the lines and understand of their meanings. 
because this is the flow of energy that dominates all life formation. Here is a very simple example. Then based on these energy patterns, falls the endoplasmic reticulum that is capable to produce life or replicate life. We shall see as we go on. The protein is the battery of the gene. Without that battery, the gene cannot function. And if the battery runs out, the genes cannot function and bring about genetic defect. Full step. You can see the horn of the cows and the goats has been reproduced here alive exactly to the same pattern as the Sumerian seal was teaching. And these are alive. So are these. And so are these. In the background you see the Sumerian seal. Here you can see the beginning the protein production taking the lead by the black bird. The black protein is black because it absorbs light. Here are some of the plants magnified 5,000 times in the biological process. So all of these plants you will see later on on the seals. These are the proteins producing life. These are black proteins produced by these plants. Here the seal again, the Sumerian seal, and here again a reproduction according to the Sumerian teaching and wave pattern. The wave interlocking, the reproduction is alive. And in the center you will see the bio machine. We'll talk about it later. And in the bottom you see the Seed of life coming from the sun. Discuss that later. Before I take you to a journey to Sumeria, I have explained it to you how we wound up there. We begin with crystal. As you can see on this evidence, that single crystal with the star of David or the Styria, dealing the sacred geometry. The internal structure of these crystals, see that it's in superlattice, the marching band. These crystals self hologram themselves. Baby crystal, reproduced by the mama crystals. It is further evidenced, grains are tetrahedra on life crystal. Here, the grains laid in a vortex pattern around the tetrahedra in life crystal. These are some of the purified form. Very high purification. And by doing so, I was able to put the grains into superlattice. Once that happened, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The crystals came alive. They had free access to energy and life energy. They begin to build cytoplasm and begin the protein production. Glowing the lip in the Sumerian cells. That was for me the cosmic life form, genetic materials and proteins, nucleotides can be put into sacred geometry materials. And the first step goes to the cosmic bio machine. Before we get there, what are you here? All these little horns are reproducing the babies, the baby crystals. And 
we stepped into a new world which began to produce the very familiar seed of life that is all over in Sumerian history. There's almost no seals or tablets that does not rife. And these seeds of life also used extensively in their language and building the Sumerian figures within the secret code. And here you see, you see the first baby bio machine evolving from six cells like we do. We differentiate from five or six cells. So are these machines. But these machines sometimes differentiate from many cells. And I ask myself the question, who says that the DNA has to be double helix? Who says that the DNA has to be single strand? So I took the nucleotides, put them into sacred geometry, and placed the protein in between, like eggs in the carton. This is the way I begin to build the cosmic bio machine, based on superlaris and sacred geometry. This was the very first one. The very first one with implosion belts, with black and white vortex dishes in superlattice. Of course, they all had a headquarters and a dark protein factor in the center, black protein factory, black because the electrons are paired in the amino acids. What these machines did produce the essence of life. Kept the sun liquefying and even produce light. Condensing atoms, particles, waves, interlocking hyperdimensional waves an entirely new physics at hand, which mankind wouldn't understand at this point until he begins on it. This is what the Sumerians were telling to us, that life originates from the sun. And these miracle machines, the cosmic bio-machines, during the essence of life and liquefied. And that is essential for life formation beside the breath of God, which lies in life. That is the seed of life. Our protein substrate in our mitochondria is too in sacred geometry. That's why they can produce ATP. This is actually from a living cell that contained the mitochondria. The Sumerian woman holds in the hand a glass of elixir. But look at the protein in her dress. Lots of it. On the skirt, nucleotides and proteins, telling us that the elixir is coming from that. Or it's needed to maintain that kind of life form. My, look at my machine with the nucleotides and the protein in order in the vortex to capture the essence of life from the sun. And these are my reactors. The Pyrex column 
under pressure, where these tiny little machines by the millions in there capturing the life energy. And this is the Sumerian. As you can see, it even overflows with the elixir emanating light. And you can see the gravitational rings on the cylinders. And that's the way they produced it. And here you see my plant. That I have different location around the world. Sumerian technology. When first I found the blueprint on a Sumerian seal of the bio machine, I couldn't believe my eyes. And those are the black proteins and showing how it's being produced. which I reproduced. And this is it. But I was stunned again when I found the house of life and discovering that the roof is the vortex dishes of my bio machine. And not only that, but it's matching the blueprint. And this is a different seal found in another part of the world. Look at this. And look at this. Look at it, it's identical. And those are the nucleotides and proteins to the roof. And inside the house, nucleotides and protein and genetic material. This is the house of life. We just need to take off the roof. And if you strip mine, that's what you will find underneath. Then found the second one. It's magnified to high magnification. It clearly shows how to produce the black protein. And this is the cell life. And other words on my bio machine. And then I strip down my machines. And these are different kinds of bio machine, but look at what's over here. The center core of the machine. I find on this Sumerian seal representing life with the seed of life. The half crest, it's not a moon, it's the seed of life. I will show you documentary on that. And what you see there, those are my plants taken apart, reversed, showing it like arrows. If you take them out of there, turn them around, put them together, it's the plant producing the black protein. And this is the way they put all these figures. The secret code. Each figure and each line represent an answer in the biophysical and life process. And look at those black proteins to rebuilding a machine which I destroyed. Sometimes you run into anti-gravitational machines on the seal, which they use quite often in many processes, including transportation and teletransportation. Sumerians came from our twin sun. And this is what they show on this picture. 
they show me the sun or the solar system they came from. Everything there is insane. But in our sun, we have nuclear reaction and radiation. But they also show that life originates from the sun. Uh, you can see these on the ornaments on Tutankhamen, or you can see in the Incas or the Aztecs or Northern Europe, in Denmark, taken out from the bugs, peat bugs on silver, and so on from India, from Greece. Of course, everything on this planet came from the Sumerians. And here you can see the machine. The face is, I captured the life energy from the sun. But again, I reproduced it over here. Further, also the planets, the life, that bring it a little bit and three. Now these are stars on the bio machines. Find in many Sumerian cells. By the way, every time Sumerian dress, you can write on it. Sacred Gian, super lattice, interaction, the whole and this here again showing that life originates from the sun. This is why she's showing her breast full of life. Now this lever has been reproduced here. This Sumerian puzzle on a Sumerian seal showing the cosmic incubator is or decrease physically we are hyperdimensional hologram replication. This machine showing as the protons the proteins black means emerging through the septums in the center of the machine. This is the first Sumerian king shown coming from the second sun. Also shown on his cane that it has sacred geometry. Cane of a panther. Now, Tutankhamen wound up on a panther, a Brazilian, and not Egyptian. As many artifacts in Tutankhamen's grave. Now, this Sumerian seal depicts the boat of the with the boat. This plan came out from the biological process, which I replicated, and I will demonstrate it to you here. Magnified five times. How did they see? They see through entire gravitational wave also, and photon beams. Billions of beams of them that can create geometry automatically and create superconduct put material in orderly fashion defined. And the board itself is produced. See it right here. This is a replicated one. The tape to show you right there. Plant over here. Duplicated over here. And these you find and of course over here. Every time I run the process, plenty of them around. Here is one magnified 10,000 times. Light emerging at the tip. This later, oh, yeah. the and I have a book with 300 tools, the tool shed of the gods, which I'll show you later. The 
is. This is a cow from a Sumerian seal, or rather from a Sumerian instrument. We run its neck. It's a folded cytoplasm. Each part of this cow represents a process. I shall elaborate and document later. Liquid neutrino condenses into layered condensed matter, forming the elixir of life. Because its physical structure, forming sacred geometry, superlattice, it splits the light, dissolving the photons. These photons, when re-emerging, they're put into lockstep countless coherent beings in order. And these billions of coherent photon beams forming the interference that holds the information for the scatter of life. Carrying the blueprint at the interference point in the form of hyperdimensional holograph. This is what the Sumerians, the gods of God, were telling us. They conveyed the message in a way that men could not have access to it until they are mature, mature enough to understand it. And it shall be transferred to those only who are ready to leave behind the past and commit to the future stepping up to a higher plane. Those who has the key to cancel the gravity or lift up the sea and airborne from its bed. They don't walk around with guns and badges. The laboratory experiments with the human race that began with the Atlantis is coming to an end soon. And the new time is emerging and the crossbars will be rolled off the sky, and men shall emerge as a victor and be free. Before I go any further, I will have to elaborate on some of the seals and see of the Sumerian language. The life reside in these horns. Coming through the light and the layered structure of the elixir. Calling life into being. the breath of creation, the breath of God, possessing the intelligent and the blueprint of life. There are tens of thousands of Sumerian seals, and they all depict the origin of life. They took parts of biological processes and assembled them into figures, sometimes in reverse position. It's the way they built this specific language to explain the origin of life. In the secret code, now, in this one, there is one character, not an other, teaching 
the language. They use these in their schooling to teach others all these characters, not from the life process, heavily arranged, to record biophysical technology. As you see later, the meaning of this horn and the pieces, the very most put together. You will say lots of proteins, seeds of life, and the tools of the gods, hundreds of them. The boat always means the boat of life. And these biological plants producing black protein is prominent. Even the feet of the goat resembles some of the plants producing black proteins. Of these animals. These are only a few examples. The elixir had a great significance in their life because it appears in almost every cell and the process of producing them. These are some of the tools from the tool shed of the gods. They're all protein producers and they use this symbol in their ceremonies. It's very typical to the prehistoric Sumerian to see the protein within they built. Everything is coming from the genetic process. These are a simplified version of how they produce the elixir reactors. I presume this kind of seals they were using in their schooling. Less sophisticated. It tells you the physics, the biochemistry, yet is lacking the skill, the way they usually grave in the seals. In this picture, for example, the plants here depicting producing black proteins. Yet here, very same plant is put to limited method, a piece of life, or the seed of life. Now these are the real original ones that originates from the process that I replicated. He's holding a protein stand his back. Or is this? And the middle one carries the plant. And the lines out of the shoulders mean thing. The boat is the boat of life. As you can see here, is replica. And inside with proteins, the way and this producing black proteins. These are the of the both replicated. Here you see the same plants. And again, protein is the origin of life. All part 
of the human body is built from protein. And this plow and the animals and the characters also means all of these parts indicated as I show you later. It's nothing to do with agriculture. Rather, with the elixir and the origin of life and the teaching that the origin of life is the sun. It's all begin with amino acids and proteins. The prehistoric graves holding the most information because the copies made by the Babylonians and Assyrians lost most of the information. They did not have to, to expand and reduce space with anti-gravity and do the engraving on a microscopic level. Please picture later you will see that they are proteins, nothing to do with lightning bolts as they teach it to you. This is my pattern of the activated metals to teaching the principle of superconductivity issued in 1976. And the Sumerians, the same thing, teaching genetic materials and proteins and superlattice becoming superconductive. These materials, genetic materials, nucleotides, proteins, in superlattice have free access to energy. It assumes the sacred geometry. And that's the technology I use to build my cosmic bio-machine to capture the essence of life from the sun. As the Sumerians were describing it on their seals. The fingerprint of the Sumerians are all over the world. The same plant is on the seal from gold. The origin of life on this birth chair. Sumerian origin. Even this eagle, made of proteins. Or this goat on the boat of life. all the characters and the seed of life, not a lotus, but the seed of life. From the hair of this child, the horn of the goat. Yes, even this black panther. As you can see, the fingerprint of the Sumerians, including the horn of the goat. And always, the proteins as evidenced here all here and showing where it came from of course the pattern under dress again sacred geometry and you can write a book of physics from the information You can go on and on, digging up the evidence by the thousands and match every character and every figure. Up to the beginning of life, with the protein stick and the symbol of life and the process producing the protein and the gods of God. Nucleotide things in sacred geometry. Protein production.
This is my... And that is the Sumerian. These are the famous goats. Even the plant is stretched across their body. See? Coming from the biological process. Same here. Proteins in super light. And we could go on and on. The power of cross and the famous home. As you see you shall, you shall see you next time. And we end this section with the Sumerian star. This is a prehistoric plate of Sumeria depicting the life process. It's the famous cows with the horn and the endoplasmic reticulum folded, wrapped around his neck. And this is how it begins. The horn of the life process comes in many shapes, but all with the same function. Whether it's a horn of a cow or a horn of a goat, it means the same. And here is a goat. And from his head under his eyes, growing up a spermatozoa. And the whole head, genetic material is produced. And the secret is in the horn. Take a look at this Sumerian seal. The two goats, the men embracing. But the torso of the man is the bear jar of the cosmic bio machine. The upper part, the life form that producing the black proteins. But so is the home and face of the goat. And the same seal shows the spermatozoa. I added mine into it as the spermatozoids produced with the same process. See, it is growing out of the head of the goat. And here is how it begins. The key is to elixir. The force of life. This has been produced from dead, dispersed, genetic material, four years old, and with the elixir added, within hours, life resurrected, and billions and trillions in spermatozoa and germinal cells begin to pour out. This is as the process begins. But you can always notice the step, elixir, and genetic nature. A spermatozoa in the center that had been synthetically produced. Life begins with protein. that produced by elixir. This elixir is producing amino acids and providing the life energy. As well, the something seal. Tell it to you clearly. He's not taking off his head. He's showing you the protein. The 
organelles of a cell can flourish outside of the cell. They also can be magnified to be giants. Like this cytoplasm forming strings for rods. The membrane between them then in the angstrom unit range. Picking up its part in the process. As this tool too came from the tool shed of the gods. Endoplasmic reticulum can come in many shape and form. One of the form is the horn. And you're witnessing here how the delicate membranes fold. Sumerians were great to grow synthetically genetic so inseminating, which to Atlantis. All this has been replicated in vitro in my lab. Utilizing sacred this piece of or part of piece of jewelry, great show me spermatogonia, spermatozoa, and the history of the seven races, including all the genetic materials, protein strings, and strings, and RNA DNA. On submicroscopic settings, how did they do it? Look at this statue, comparable to very thin gold wire. It's a perfect statue. Each pot was put together but molecular grains. Even the